Clean Cleveland is part of the Healthy Neighborhood Initiative and is made possible by the passage of Issue 32. Each week, the various service departments take a systemic approach to repairing, cleaning, and upgrading the neighborhoods. Look for the Healthy Neighborhood Impact Teams making a difference in your neighborhood. Welcome to the Clean Cleveland Show. I'm Dan Monroe. We're here at East 55th, just north of Harvard in the South Broadway neighborhood to see what the Clean Cleveland Neighborhood Impact Team is doing on your street. Before we show you that action, let's learn a little bit about the South Broadway neighborhood. Located on the southeast side of Cleveland, South Broadway is one of Cleveland's oldest neighborhoods. Though the demographics have shifted, the South Broadway neighborhood was home to Cleveland's original Czech and Polish immigrants. The largest part of the South Broadway neighborhood is called Slavic Village in honor of the original immigrants. Joining me now is Assistant Director Randy Scott of Public Works. Sir, before we talk about what's happening in this community, let's talk about, talk about the Clean Cleveland Initiative as a whole. Yes, well, on behalf of Mayor Frank Jackson, I want to thank the voters for the passage of Issue 32, which allowed us to restore this Clean Cleveland uh, concept to our service delivery. Uh, by doing what we've been doing, doing uh, patching potholes, filling fire hydrants, we, we put together a team, a, a healthy neighborhood impact team that is comprised of every operating division of the city of Cleveland. That includes public works, public utilities, public health, building and housing. And what we did, we put together a uh, neighborhood impact team that would allow us to come in to a specific neighborhood, specific subsection, and work all of these disciplines together, thus having an impact in our neighborhoods, painting fire hydrants, uh, dealing with code enforcement, filling potholes as you see what's going on here today, sweeping the streets. So what we want to do is really do a concerted effort uh, and a systematic approach going subsection by subsection, neighborhood by neighborhood. We'll be continuing to do this all the way through November of this year and then we'll start in earnest again in April. Now today we're in the South Broadway neighborhood. Uh, we see the crews behind you. They didn't just show up unannounced. The, the residents had some kind of prior knowledge of this, didn't they? Absolutely. What we do is we come out the day before and we'll post those orange fluorescent street cleaning signs that says street cleaning and, uh, and or street repair. And we give everybody a notice so they can move their cars, which allows our crews to, do, to work efficiently. And we post a whole area. We just don't post one street. We post a whole area, which we call a subsection. We've divided the city of Cleveland into 292 subsections. And each one of them will receive service over the next year. Now let's take a look at what's going on behind us. I see we're fixing some potholes. Yeah. Is this part of what's going on today or is there going to be more? There's going to be more. We're, today we're filling potholes. We're also sweeping the streets. Uh, the day before we've had inspectors out checking catch basins, uh, looking at street lighting. Uh, and then they'll come in the day after and clean the catch basins. After we get through with the potholes and the sweeping, they'll come and clean catch basins, repair the street lighting, do the board ups on the vacant properties and things of that nature. Now it's also exciting for the residents, when they look out their window, what kind of trucks, what kind of machinery could they see? Well, you're going to see uh, the pothole crews filling the potholes with the trucks and the rollers who do the compaction. Then you're going to see the sweepers come through to clean up any res residue from the uh, pothole repair process. And then you'll see a vacuum machine come out tomorrow from the uh, sewer department. Uh, prior to this, the day before, hydras are being painted and inspections were being done so that we can deploy our crews efficiently and know exactly what we need to do and where we need to do it. Now, it should also be important to note that there is a tip line set up for residents to call in to the, Clean Cleve uh, the Healthy Cleveland Initiative team. Talk about that. Yes, you have a couple of numbers. You have uh, 311, which you can call, which is uh, will feed any public works complaints straight to our, our, our answering service. And we will create a work order and get it out to the crew so we can blend that in with the work that we're doing today. Also, if you see illegal dumping, that's an environmental crime. And what we're trying to do is catch illegal dumpers in the process or report illegal dumping by using 664-DUMP, 664-D-U-M-P. Okay. Director, thank you very much for joining me today. I do appreciate it. Yes, Dan, thank let's, you. Let's take a look at the progress that's been going on in this neighborhood so far.
As you can see, a lot of progress is being made. Now let's take you to some Cleveland trivia. Built in the early 1900s, Hessler Court near Case Western University is the last remaining street in Cleveland to use wood block pavers. There are only five cities in the United States that this early road design is still in use. Thanks for watching this episode of Clean Cleveland. I'm Dan Monroe. Be sure to look for the neighborhood impact teams in your neighborhood and let them know what you think. We'll see you next time.